If I asked you what you thought the best element to run on Chroma's abilities was, you're probably going to say maybe Fire or Ice. These have been the two most popular elements for a long time. I'm not here to tell you that they're bad, but I am here to tell you that the two least used elements, both Electricity and Toxin, have a hell of a lot more to offer than you guys think. In today's video I'm going to be showing you four different Chroma builds slash setups revolving around each individual element he has to offer, each one of these builds providing something a little different in terms of maybe playstyle and effectiveness and how it works, some having weapon interactions, some being mod specific interactions, and just overall providing four very unique and fun setups to try on a Warframe that is usually considered to just have two abilities. The order we shall be going in for today's video will be first covering Toxin Chroma, then Electricity, then Fire, and then Ice. So let's get into Toxin first. We're going to have a lot of helmet in this video because, as you guys probably already know, Chroma's first and fourth ability kind of suck. I do tend to keep the first ability on just so I can more freely cycle through the elements, and sometimes I find selecting your energy colour as your choice of element doesn't really work in missions. But the first one we're going to cover today is Toxin. The baseline for what the Toxin version of Elemental War does to Chroma is it gives you faster reload speed and a Toxin damage aura around you. It used to give you better holster speed as well, but that's no longer a thing. And this is widely considered to be the most useless version of Chroma because who the hell cares about reload speed when it doesn't get accompanied by a fire rate buff. However, there is a very specific interaction that this ability possesses that was brought to light to me by Nova Umbral. Simply put, Toxin Chroma's aura with a decent amount of range, then a melee weapon that has really good lifted status effects, allows you to run melee affliction and apply massive amounts of damage via melee affliction and the Toxin Aura. So you'd run up to an enemy with your Toxin Aura and hit them. In this case, I'm using a Blade and Whip, which have really good lifted status. They get lifted up into the air, thus allow me to make use of melee afflictions, and they'll be procced by my Toxin Aura. Now, before we continue here, I'm not a big math guy when it comes to how these interactions work, and if you guys are interested in the specifics of how this works, I'm going to put up the screenshots on the screen of all the math that Nova Umbral had told me, and we're just going to read these through real quick. Enemies around you take 5% of their max HP as toxin damage with guaranteed status in 5 meters. Melee Affliction allows you to apply that proc plus 6 times, but since those 6 status are applied by Affliction, it also gets affected by Bane and status damage mods on the weapon. 5% of the enemy's max HP applies a toxin proc that deals 2.5% of the enemy's max HP as damage per tick. 2.5 times 1.3 Bane times 1.9 status damage times 6 number of procs equals 37.05% of the enemy's max HP dealt per tick. If you're wondering what I personally got from this, I just saw a big fucking number on the screen and was like, yeah, I like the build. Thanks bro. The playstyle simply is, you're super tanky because you have Chroma's damage buffs and his tanky buffs from Vex Armor. You have a solid range toxin aura around you that is going to proc enemies and then as soon as you hit them with your melee weapon, in this case I was using the Mios, they'll start floating up in the air and any sort of attack or especially heavy attacks will just have massive amounts of bleed and toxin procs going off and there's not many things in the game that are going to survive this. Anywho, it's a super unique interaction. I'm going to show you both the Mios and the Chroma build. Let's get into it. Two things you've got to address. One, Yes, I got 5 Tower Forge Crimson Strength Shards in here. This isn't necessary, it's overkill and I kind of do like Chroma, so just do whatever you want with the shards. And I'm also using Nourish on the setup in place of my 4th. This is so I can use Viral Damage and it's going to help with my energy consumption. We are combining Growing Power, Transient Fortitude, Umbral Intensify and Blind Rage for our strength. Now I'm minded an Augur Message for our duration, but you could forego Augur Message for Equilibrium. Stretch to counteract some of the range loss from Now Reminded. Prime sure foot so we don't get knocked down. Still fiber and adaptation for our survivability, and then we're combining that with blessing and grace. Naturally, Toxin Chroma isn't as tanky as some of the others. This is more of a damage focused build, which is why I'm going with grace and blessing to help bolster up some of the survivability. As for the Mio setup, it's a little bit different than what you probably used to seeing on this weapon. Condition overload for base damage with statuses, prime fury for our attack speed, prime reach for our range. We are running base corrosive on here with melee elementalist then killing blow for better heavy attacks, and of course, as Nova recommended, the smite mods. And of course, the most important thing in here is melee afflictions, which is going to get propped constantly because of Defiled Snapdragon. As for focus schools, I recommend Madurai, because why not? And Nourish is helping with energy, so we wouldn't need Xeneric, so having bonus strength is really nice. Moving on, we're now going to tackle Electric Chroma, who is of course more shield based. I've always been drawn to this setup, mainly because Chroma is naturally a health tank based on armor and HP. 
but ever since this game has gotten way better shield gating and our shields in general are considered to be much better for survivability especially when going to level cap my main focus around this build was to not only make the electric barbs from elemental ward do a pretty large amount of damage but also somehow scale elemental ward's shield buff into somehow being used to be a shield gate setup and with the run that you can see in the background of me using this setup, I only died once because I wasn't focusing on my shield gate pattern. Let me quickly explain how the electric barbs and the shields work. Each time an enemy damages you, if they are within range, an electric barb will spark out from your ward, stunning the enemy and damaging them with electricity. And this will do more damage the more damage the enemies did to your shields. So realistically, if an enemy that doesn't have, let's say, a lot of HP hits you for a massive amount of damage and takes away all of your shields, they're going to take a large amount of damage. This can be one of those builds where sometimes when you're strolling around, you're going to notice that the fodder enemies may just drop dead from your elemental ward. And of course, electric ward also allows you to extend the amount of shields you can get to granting you high shield values and overshield. Of course, we're going with Arcane Barrier and Arcane Aegis, Reef Respite, the Elemental Ward Shield buff from Electricity, and we're also using Pillage in here. So the sequence in which you'd realistically want to use your abilities is up to you as long as you are casting them within a consistent basis. You have Brief Respite available, which means you're going to get a little bit of shield gate from casting Vex Armor. The two element award is also going to give you shields, which means another shield gate. Pillage grants you a lot of shields as well, which is another form of shield gate. But due to the duration on the build, this will take a little bit longer to activate. So to help with this, we're also using Rolling Guard to give us iframes. And you can see by the gameplay in the background that this constant rotation of shield gates and iframes, as well as shield regen from our arcanes, this renders my chroma borderline unkillable, as long as you are playing the pattern correctly. Combine that with the barbs doing not only decent damage, but also a large amount of CC to enemies close to you. And I honestly think electric chroma is probably the best scaling survivability wise, due to his ability to shield gate better than other warframes. The setup is one of my favorites right now and it's super fun as for weaponry i was using the natarip just to have a bit of fun this thing absolutely smacks on chroma and of course it also stripping a large amount of enemies armor due to having pillage it won't be a hundred percent strip as you'll see the build won't be able to fit in enough power strength to do so but around a 70 percent strip is more than enough to make do with and then i'm using not only one of the best weapons in the game but also one that is just completely broken with chroma and that is the zoris let's get into the builds so as we just mentioned we are using pillage here then for our shields, we are running Brief Respite, Arcane Barrier, Arcane Aegis, Prime Redirection, and then we're also using Fast Deflection and Vigilante Vigor for a shit ton of shield recharge speed. Rolling Guard for the iframes and adaptation to stack with the natural damage reduction that comes with your shields. Prime Shot for it for no knockdowns, and already this build is basically unkillable if played correctly. Prime Continuity for our duration. Blind Rage for our strength, and then Archon Stretch to not only help stun enemies from further away and of course use Pillage from a further distance, but because we're constantly doing electricity damage, this is also going to proc, giving us a lot of energy regen on a regular basis. However, I will say this isn't enough to keep you sustained energy-wise, and if you want to be spamming your abilities, especially to shield gate properly, this build, in my opinion, wants Xenoric. I don't use Xenoric a lot nowadays, but if there's one build here which I can highly recommend it on, it would be this one. You could forego maybe Barrier for an Energize. You can maybe work the build in a different way to have better energy sustain. For me personally, I just like Xenoric in this setup. For my Naderic, there's one thing worth noting. The only thing you should probably interchange in here would be Galvanized Aptitude for the new Rifle Elementalist mod. The damage between these two mods is pretty comparable, and I can't think of anything else in this build that I would actually want to get rid of but we went with a viral slash build here. And here is our melee influence Zorus setup using shock and charge to proc influence. The new elementalist mods are insane, so I am using one right here. Corrupt charge is also interchangeable. It's up to you, personal preference on this one. But yeah, we're mostly just going with the standard mods that you would for throwing weapons and then some crit. And like I said for this build, you're better off using Xenoric to help keep your energy sustain up. So that's the first two done. Now we're gonna move on to heat chroma. Now it's worth noting, I have to give credit where credit is due here. This build is inspired by a YouTuber named Unified Codex, specifically this video that I'm showing on your screen right now. It's a fantastic setup, super unique. All credit goes to this guy for the inspiration. Let me break it down for you real quick. Heat Chroma gives you bonus HP. This not only caps out your maximum HP to be higher than what it normally would be, but this can also act as a form of healing yourself. And of course you have a fiery aura around you, but you mainly use Heat Chroma for its heals. This build mainly focuses on a different aspect of HP that you wouldn't expect for a Heat Chroma. The combination of using the new Arcane, Arcane Battery, with the mods Quick Thinking and Rage, the HP of Heat Chroma, 
and the massive amounts of armor you can achieve with Vex armor means that you can completely cap out your maximum energy with Arcane Barrier via that Vex armor buff. Then with Heat you have a massive amount of HP to work with, meaning whenever you take damage to it, you'll regen your energy, and once you hit down to 0 HP, you'll start draining energy before you die. In addition to this, we're also using the Augment for Chroma's Vex armor, which constantly refreshes the duration and allows you to heal yourself each time you kill enemies. With all this combined, you have a massive amount of HP, armor, energy, which also counts as HP due to quick thinking, constant regening energy due to rage, constant regening HP due to the augment, and just an endless cycle of energy tanking and health tanking. However, my personal gripe with quick thinking setups is the mod itself, quick thinking. Sometimes this thing just doesn't work, I swear down you'll get one shot through it. Regardless of this, this build is super unique, a really nice switch up from a regular heat chroma. It's very tanky, but do be aware the scaling of this build is dependent on quick thinking and how sort of inconsistent it is. I've run into very few issues with this setup and it is just a ton of fun, especially seeing your energy values go that high. And the reason why we're using heat chroma here instead of ice, because the armor buff from Vex armor caps out your energy to 1800 and any more bonus armor buffs will not be additive to your maximum energy. So you're better off just going with the HP buff. For weaponry, I was messing around with the combination of the boar and the harmony, the boar prime using its incarnate of course, and I'll be honest, I was kind of sleeping on the harmony a little bit when this weapon first came out. I regret this deeply, and this weapon absolutely kicks ass with melee afflictions. Before we get into the build, I want to quickly talk about the helmet. I'm using a power, as per the suggestion from Codex himself, however I would like to try something else in here in the future, because I think there are options that could be better maybe using something like Parasitic Armor to get rid of your shields and have even more HP tanking. I don't know, Empower's cool on this build, but I don't like the playstyle because you have to do a lot of casting before you cast your Elemental Ward or your Vex Armor to get you know, the Strength buff. Definitely give this a shot, it's super strong, but a little bit of a needy ability in terms of how much you gotta cast it. As for the build, we are using Stand United in the Aura. The aura is kind of flexy for this build, you can use whatever you want. I just felt like using this because I am marked on navigation, Tenno. Margulis, please fuck off. Well, what was I saying? Yeah, the aura. You can put whatever you want in here. I just like Stand United because, you know, a little bit bonus armor, why not? Prime your food once again. Then of course, the Prime Flow, Quick Thinking, Arcane Battery, Arcane Blessing, Hunter Adrenaline, and Adaptation Setup. For our strength, we're using Blind Rage, Archon Intensify, and Orga Secrets. Archon Intensify, purely because I'd have to shove another Umbral Former in here, and I can still get good strength buff considering that Guardian Armor is allowing me to heal myself a lot. If you're playing this with teammates, you'll take more damage, but the build's going to be just fine. And Arcane Blessing can be flexed out for what I would recommend with this specific setup is actually Arcane Tempo. The reason being is that I'm using the Boar Prime with its Incarnon, and I really like this weapon when I have a Fire Rate mod on it. So that's why tempo would be good, but in this build I don't. This build is a nice blend of not only making the beam version from the Incarna very strong, but also allowing you to pretty much one-shot majority of the enemies you run up against, just with its base fire mode. This thing hits like a truck, and what do you know, it's another shotgun elementalist mod. The arcane slot can be flexed here, primary deadhead is really nice, especially when you go for the headshots, it will just one-shot everything. And prime point blank is really up to you, there's a number of things you could use in here. This is also the spot I'd recommend replacing if you have a ribbon. And for the harmony setup, we're going full status, corrosive blast, just massive amounts of damage on our heavy attacks, disciplines merit for a lot of upkeep on our Tenokai, melee elementalist, who would have thought, melee afflictions is a must have, and yeah, you guys know this weapon is hot shit right now. It's so good, and you gotta get your hands on one. And this build can run Madurai because it's very energy efficient, so more strength the better. And what better way to end the builds on the absolute classic, Ice Chroma. This will be the most simple of all of the builds, considering that Ice Chroma doesn't really require any sort of insane setup to make good. Ice Chroma grants you a massive armor buff and also slows down enemies that shoot you making this the perfect weapons platform setup. The build is focused around a massive amount of strength and a little bit of self-sustain. This is definitely a very meta and power creep build because we are using Nourish once again. And what I'm doing with this in the build in the background, I am using the Phantasma Prime. Phantasma Prime has become even more mental since the status update. It's base damage being radiation. The fact that I can rock corrosive and blast, buff it up with Chroma's damage, 
and use Nourish for Viral. In addition to this, I'm also using the Nautilus to group enemies up, making use of its innate punch through. This weapon tears down hordes of enemies instantly and it's very satisfying to use. And I kind of understand why Ice Chroma is seen as one of, if not the best versions. He's very simple, it makes Chroma even more tanky, and with the way the game has gotten harder in terms of health scaling over the years, the higher level the enemies, the more damage you're going to take, and your health will only go so far, it makes sense that you would pick one that not only slows down enemies DPS, increases your armor, and it can rebound Bombard Rockets. It's easy to see why Ice Chrome has been so popular, and this is a full on power creep setup. And I was using the same Zorus build in this gameplay that I was earlier in the video. The playstyle is simple, you keep up Nourish, Vex Armor and Elemental Ward and you go to town with your weaponry. So we have gone almost all out on power strength with Growing Power, Transient, Orca Secrets, Intensify and Blind Rage. Prime your food once again, Adaptation and Vitality for HP and Tankiness. Now reminded an Orga message for our duration. However, I do think Equilibrium would be better than Augur Message and I'd highly recommend trying that in your build. You'll sacrifice a bit of duration but you'll have way better health and energy sustain and I think the health will come in really handy for keeping your HP up when enemies start to hit harder if you plan on going further. Speaking of which, we're also using Grace and Guardian for even more tankiness. You could forego Guardian due to the armor on this build already, but I think Grace is very useful considering that Ice Chroma doesn't heal himself like the Heat version does. And remember, the shards are also here giving me even more strength, much like with the previous builds, hence why it's a 397. And here is the Phantasma Prime build. Like I said, Corrosive Blast, full on status and base damage, Vigilante Armaments is definitely a flexi slot here, and Shotgun Elementalist can be used instead of Galvanized Savvy or even Vigilante Armaments as well that, that could be included. And due to Nourish, I feel more than comfortable using Madurai on here instead of Xenoric. So that does it for all four of the builds I wanted to showcase with all their individual elements in this video and be sure to let me know in the comments section which element you guys run in your chroma. Very curious to see what the ratio is and also let me know if you're going to try any of these builds in this video. I recommend giving them all a go but me personally the ones I found most fun were electricity and toxin just because I've played so much heat chroma in the past it's really nice to actually feel like I'm fully effective with the other versions of chroma now. They feel like they have a place and back to what i said at the start of the video the fact that chroma feels like he has two abilities even if you just forget his first and his fourth the different playstyles elemental ward has to offer when you change its element to me it feels like he has way more than two abilities available anywho i hope you guys enjoyed the video please feel free to like comment subscribe follow me on twitch that's where we do a bunch of these long survival streams and do our build theorizing also shout out to everyone that came over from the recent apex video you guys are real ones for that, and yeah, there'll be more videos to come soon. You guys take care, and I'll see you in the next video.